We decided the office was not a good idea. Last night, we changed our minds. It's yours, clean the fan in O'Donnell's office. And what exactly did you see? Well, you were there. I don't know if I'd like to strip off at work. I'd have to do it after hours when everyone's gone. It's not a nightly fixture. Maybe you should be more careful. You were here late, weren't you? Did O'Donnell have any visitors? Not that I know of. This is weird. I don't want Abe to find out. Please, don't parade your conscience in front of me. Dangerous Games in This Life, Thursday, 9.45 on BBC Two. Friday night. The tunnel in Glasgow. The essential seven. The Cota in Bristol. The pod in Dublin. Cream in Liverpool. The Ministry of Sound in London. The essential selection is it's overground. It's just about vibe. Vibe, 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 vibe. Beaming down from the Big Apple, now on BBC Two, Jamie Theakston goes into the Ozone. Over the next two days, some of the biggest names in rock music will be performing here at Randall's Island in New York. Bands like U2, Radiohead, Noel Gallagher, Blur, Björk, the Beastie Boys will all be hoping that in the next 48 hours, they'll be able to make a real difference to the people of Tibet. Throughout its history, music has always taken a stand for social rights and ideals. Apartheid and famine were common to the 70s and 80s, but in 97, the Beastie Boys are telling a new generation about the culture and crises of Tibet. How would you explain the, the kind of vibe of this whole festival? I was really nervous. Um, I didn't want, you know, I think... I think pop people in the 80s made a lot of silly mistakes and were pompous when they did these things, you know, and, and sort of made us all look stupid. I think the 90s breed are, are a little more uh, sussed. The way all this is done, it's just done for so much the right reason, with so much integrity and passion. And it's just so outrageous and so over the top that it's just obvious to everybody who's still human that something should be done. Hollywood movies, benefit albums and major concerts have all found Tibet as this year's flavour. Everyone from Brad Pitt to Bono have done their bit for increased awareness, which may not directly change global politics, but will guarantee headlines and possibly education. in Tibet 10 days ago and uh, kids in Tibet know about this concert they've heard about it but the important thing to remember is that it's illegal in Tibet uh, to listen to Voice of America and, and the kids listening to this concert this weekend are taking a big risk and if they're caught listening to this concert they could be thrown out of school they could uh, jeopardize job prospects um, or worse. I have to say, I'm not like, uh, I'm not a Buddhist and I, I know about the Tibet situation, but I would not say I'm an expert, but, you know, we just felt like, okay, we have the day, let's just come down and do it. It's actually about people getting together and, you know, celebrating a non-violent approach to something that's very inhumane. 
Buddhism first came to Tibet in the 8th century and quickly became an integral part of the country. But on the other side of the Himalayas, China has claimed sovereignty over Tibet, dating as far back as the 13th century. Tibet's modern day story starts in 1949, when the communist revolution prompted a renewed interest in its relationship with Tibet, an interest that quickly led to invasion. For nine troubled years, the Chinese attempted to dissolve the Tibetan nationality and religion. In 1959, their attempts to do so led to a massive uprising against the Chinese, which was brutally suppressed. Now, um, Johnny, do you think events like this can actually make a difference? I think they can. I think um, one of the few groups of people who are actually outside the whole corporate structure and don't have any vested interest in this money-making stuff are artists, are people like us who, who have a public body. <laughs> of the issues being drowned out by this celebrity endorsement? Um, yeah, there is a real danger of it. Um, but in some ways it's irrelevant because the whole point of doing it is embarrassing the Chinese government and um, basically the egos will not be relevant. Yes, yes, you You don't stop! KRS-1! Yes, yes, you You don't stop! How important is it for you personally to be involved uh, this weekend? Uh, it's very important. Uh, actually, we're here to represent hip-hop culture because we noticed a lot of not only Tibetans but also Chinese youth uh, together that represent hip-hop culture and through that they transcend all governments ideas of their wars and their stupidity you, you got what I need. say what say what say what oh baby you say what it's really a cultural event the idea of hip-hop culture being here with all of these other cultures is this is this is what world peace is really all about the dalai lama is more than just a head of state he is like a combination of pope and prime minister but one who is born to office not elected to it he has worked continually to raise awareness of the plight of his people and in 1989 was awarded the nobel peace prize for his non-violent philosophy Now, uh, backstage here at the gig, we don't only get to meet uh, some of the biggest names in rock music, we also get a chance to meet some of the most beautiful women in the world, like Helena. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I mean, I haven't seen you for such a long time. We're such good mates, you know, we hang around together quite a lot. I know. Where have you been? will feel for How important do you think the Tibetan issue is? Um, I wouldn't say I'm actively involved, but uh, I think it's a good cause to support anyhow, you know, like just by people coming here today, um, raising awareness about it, you know, like awareness I think is the key word to it, you know, that you know at least what's going on. Break down, baby. In Tibet, where Buddhism is outlawed, spiritual leaders are also political leaders. And in an attempt to stop moves towards autonomy, have struck at the heart of Tibetan nationalism, destroying thousands of monasteries and arresting monks and nuns who are sworn to non-violence and the Dalai Lama.
Marangi in his real to Karewesa na in since the uh, illegal invasion of Tibet in 1959 I have been in prison for 33 years so I would like to tell you a brief experience of my living in those 33 years We were taken into prison and then we were handcuffed with these kind of weapons Our thumbs were handcuffed like that and we were take uh, like our hands were put behind like this and we were kept like that for from 24 to 48 hours The Chinese say on paper that there is religious freedom in Tibet but it is not so and also they say that the Tibetans have a right to education but that is also not so please pay attention to this very closely because that is where the hope of Tibet lies uh, What do we know about partying or anything else <laughs> These days, every good cause seems to spawn a dodgy album or concert. But what sets free to better part is the central role the Beastie Boys have played in the campaign. Adam, first of all, how did you get involved with the uh, Tibetan people and their cause? Uh, I was in Nepal about five or six years ago, and I was trekking in the Himalayas, and um, some Tibetans were coming towards us on the road and they were refugees that had escaped from Tibet and they explained that they weren't going to go back to Tibet until uh, until it was free. I guess I just started thinking about that and it was just really powerful for me because I tried to imagine <laughs> leaving my homeland or leaving New York and my family and all my friends with the intention of not returning here and uh, it just it struck me in a really powerful way and I started learning a lot more about it after that. <laughs> Uh, from being exposed to Tibetan culture and from uh, learned a lot from the Dalai Lama and um, I'm just hoping that other people can can uh, pick that up too. The situation really needs to change there. It's it's unbelievable what's going on. One thing I've heard quite a lot over the weekend is this term, the non-violent struggle. The main reason that I'm focused on the Tibet issue and why I feel the Tibet issue is so important is because it is based on those principles of non-violence. And um, I feel like it's really a, a two-sided thing where, where we're trying to help the, the Tibetans to gain their freedom. But in a sense, it's really to benefit ourselves and our own society because those values that are inherent in Tibetan culture are the, the values that I think we really need to gain to, to find happiness and to survive. Now, no, you're here on your own. What's going on? Uh, they're in England being lazy. That's what they're doing. I'm here crafting. can actually make a real difference. I do. I mean, I, just the feeling uh, today and yesterday, it's a really, there's a very cool vibe. It doesn't seem like your usual kind of beer sloshing, vomit on each other festival, outdoor festival. Um, I think it's good and fine to raise money. Uh, this for me is more about raising awareness and hopefully kind of shoving it in the face of the U.S. government. Myself, I feel different to how I felt at any other um, festival. The fact is that everyone 
has a kind of idea why they're here and it's not it's not a forced thing. Tibet is able to gain their freedom. I think it's going to be an example to the rest of the world that, that nonviolent means really is a viable way of bringing about change. And that's why the Tibet issue is so important. And that's why the media is so important because it, since it is a nonviolent struggle, uh, really truth is their only weapon. And, and that's why this issue really needs to stay in the media and it can't just disappear. The young has a lot of power, especially via music. It's the best way to reach them. And, and they can make changes, they can talk to their parents, they can get together. Don't underestimate the youth in this country. When people go home after this weekend's concerts, what will you hope they'll tell their friends about the experience they've had this weekend? I don't know, I almost feel weird just talking about it and trying to present what's happening in Tibet because if I'm sitting at home watching TV and there's some guy on TV telling me about this other culture and oh, you should pay attention to this, I'm probably gonna change the channel. So I almost feel weird talking about it here. But uh, hopefully people will just pick it up firsthand and start to see what's actually happening there and the values that are there within Tibetan culture. Is the Tibetan issue something that's important to you or are you just pleased to be involved in a gig that raises awareness for injustice? See all of the above. We've spoken to quite a few of the artists today, and it really is an amazing list of musicians that you've managed to assemble. How did you manage that? I think, in a lot of ways, the cause speaks for itself. A lot of them already knew about it, or once they learned about it, were excited about being involved. Because there's just such a, a strong contrast between the non-violent approach that the Tibetans are taking and, uh, and the brutal oppression of the Chinese that it's difficult not to want to be involved once you find out about what's happening there. What's the most important thing here, education or entertainment? It's about both. I mean, I came here to entertain and to get people to come and possibly pick up some literature. I think Buddhism is really cool. Lots of it is really cool. Orange is my favorite color. Are you a big fan of the Beastie Boys? You have never heard about Beastie Boys before. There's a culture that's being destroyed that is one of the most sussed and together and human in the world. It's not about me, it's not about the artists really, it's about, it's about, bringing, um, it's about bringing the cause to uh, its public attention really. I really like it that, that there's a place on this earth where people have never lowered themselves to violence and I think that there's a, there's a lesson in that, in that for all of us, for everybody. Will you be organising another concert next year? I don't know, maybe, possibly. Well, hopefully Tibet will be free, right? And BBC Two is back in the Ozone on Tuesday the 26th of August. On BBC One shortly, shocking news for Tony and Polly in Tuesday's visit to Albert Square.